Welcome along to another webinar presentation from the Computer Information Agency. My name is Robert Crane and today we'll look at learning SharePoint lists. If you've got any questions or queries after the event, please don't hesitate to contact me via director at ciaops.com. You can find more about my business at the website www.ciaops.com. So with that, let's begin. First thing I need to check as always with the webinar is make sure that people can hear me. Uh, if you can't hear me, please change your status. Uh, let me know so that I can make any adjustments at my end. Um, so at this stage I can't see that anybody's got any audio issues. Um, so with that, let's, let's keep going. So a bit of housekeeping first. Uh, if you want to Twitter along with what's going on and provide feedback, I really appreciate that. You can do that via the hashtag hash CIAOps. If you want to follow my Twitter feed, you will find it at Director CIA. And information about Tuning and Resource Guide will be available at the end of the webinar. And again, if you've got any questions um, from this webinar, please send them to me via email, director at CIAOps.com, and I'll answer them offline. Okay, so let's have a look at the agenda for today. We'll have a look firstly at list types, then we'll have a bit of a look at learning, uh, sorry, working with lists, and then we'll create some lists, do some linking to lists, have a look at creating a very basic dashboard, and then come to some conclusions. So first off, let's have a look at the list types that are available in SharePoint. You've got many different sorts. Um, you've got calendar, contact, you've got your own custom list. You can make a whole swag of different list types. But the bottom line is, is lists are basically rows and columns. So very much like a spreadsheet or a database, um, you just add records. Inside each record has a number of fields, so very simple. Most lists aren't seen by default in SharePoint. There are a number of default ones that are displayed on SharePoint, but um, you have to normally create them to get the functionality of all the lists that are available. Lists can also be very easily imported and exported, so you can create a list via um, an import procedure from something like a spreadsheet, and you can also export a list to a spreadsheet or a database. And in some cases, that list may be bi-directional with um, the application. And again, lists support many of the functionalities of document libraries. So for example, they support the ability to check in and check out, check out items. They, so they allow individual um, item level securities. Uh, and again, they also have things like content approval. So lists have many of the functions and the features of a, uh, a document library. So with that, let's just uh, enable the uh, SharePoint machine so we can see where it is. So hopefully by now you should see our SharePoint server. Uh, again, this is a demo server that I've set up and it's running on a virtual machine. Uh, this SharePoint as well as the applications such as Office and Excel are currently all on the same machine. So again, you might see the occasional pop-up. Um, this only happens on a, in a server environment. Also, if there's a little bit of a delay now and then, um, that again has to do with hosting everything on a virtual machine. Another point that I will make up front is that SharePoint works much better when coupled with the latest version of Office. So I have installed on here Office 2007 to give, us, to give me the greatest functionality possible. So again, if we look over on the left-hand side of the Quick Start menu, so the Quick Start menu is this menu bar down the left-hand side, we'll see that there is an item by default here denoted as lists. If we click on this heading, we'll see that these are the lists that are currently in the document library, uh, in the current SharePoint site. So for example, we have announcements, we have calendar, we have daily reception tasks, issue links, and so on. You'll see their description and also the last time that these items were modified. And again, note that all the list types are not generally uh, available in SharePoint. They have to be added and we'll show you how to do that a little bit further down the track. So let's kick off by having a look at announcements. So to go to announcements, we just click on it. And as you can see, this is a very simple list. It basically has um, two columns, a title and a modified column. 
and as with the document library, I can click on this heading and I can sort by A to Z and if I reverse and click again, I get Z to A. Okay, so I can sort that very quickly. I can also pull this down and I can apply a filter. At the moment, that filter is only allowing me to see one entry. So again, it supports the same sort of functionality as a document library. To add a new item, um, provided that I have the rights to do that, uh, I simply go up to the new item here and I would um, type in my announcement. So again, simply fill in the required fields and as you can see uh, I have a date calendar so I just put all those dates in and I go OK and you can see that the new entry there appears at the top of the list and you'll also notice that it has a little new icon next to it to indicate that this is a new item in our list. Now if we go back to the uh, home page, you'll see that what I have embedded in my home page is actually the information from this announcement. So again, you'll now see that the item I just created called the webinar now appears on the front page. The difference here is, is that this front page is something known as a web part page and it's, for example, showing information from different areas within SharePoint. Again, this is the basis on which we'll be constructing a very simple dashboard at a later stage. But again, I can simply click on, click on the heading here called Announcements and it will take me to the list of announcements where I was before. So again, the advantage of many components of SharePoint is that you can access them via the Quick Start menu, but also you can create a dashboard style page that you can show summaries of the information that is displayed. So that's our announcements list. Let's go and have a look at another list here. Another one here is a calendar. So again, we click on that and you see that you get a standard calendar shown in monthly format. Now you'll notice over here, what I can do is I can view the calendar by day. I can view it by week. I can also view it by month. You'll also notice that I have the ability to scroll a month at a time here. And you'll also notice in the top left here, I can select any month. And as well, I have the day. So if I click on the day link, I'm taken back to my original scheme and I can then view the month. So again, to add an item here, I simply go new. I go enter all the details. Okay, uh, make it to then. I can choose whether I want to make it an all-day event, whether it's a repeating event, um, or to use a workspace. So at this stage, I'll just go OK. And you'll see it's created my webinar item in the list here. So again, I can simply click on that, go back in and edit that item, and make any changes that I think are necessary, and just go.